Busted. They're profiling his camo. So we got through everything. Um, Chris had to get cavity searched. So <laughs> he's feeling good about it. But we're about to hop on the first leg of our flight. So from here we go to Seattle. Seattle to Anchorage and Anchorage to Bethel. We just switched planes. We're now on the plane to Anchorage. So we still gotta go to Anchorage and then from Anchorage to Bethel. This is the current world record and I'm planning on beating it with my recurve. So we just uh, just got here in Anchorage. Met up with Rich. You guys ready? Yeah. So we got everything but our gun and go right now. So that's what we're waiting for. But kind of stressing out. <laughs> um, we're flying out today. Been in the hangar all morning. Um, just kind of getting the groups ready, weighing all the gear. We're trying to stay with the three of us in my group and our gear, 900 pounds or less. It just gives you more options on where you can land um, as far as lakes and where you can take off. So right now we're just going to go get some breakfast and then uh, we'll be back. Still pretty socked in. Um, even the first group that's ahead of us hasn't left. So what they're going to do now is when they get a window and they get to go, I'm going to uh, hop in with them uh, with all the gear and then they're gonna drop me off, so at least one of us can be there. Um, I can set up camp, hopefully the other guys get out the same day or I'll be spending the night out there by myself. Um, but uh, yeah, we're, we're just waiting for weather. And it, I mean, doesn't look great, but it can change any minute. group they dropped them off about 12 miles to the west and uh, and then they took this smaller plane in with all of our gear so the other pilot is heading the second hour from here to go grab um, Chris and Rich but for right now as soon as he leaves that lake I am uh, I'm in Alaska, in the middle of nowhere, by myself. I'm gonna start setting up everybody's camp. Wait for the guys, they should be here in an hour or two. Let the weather permit, if not, I'm gonna be spending the night by myself. Earlier, when I said I was alone, I forgot to mention my friend, Smith & Wesson, 460, shooting 325 grains of freak, nasty, bear stopping power, so. I ain't too worried. But here's our view. We got water everywhere. I think I can climb that tree as a glassing point. If I climbed up it, we got so lucky. Um, you can hear the plane, the guys are coming in. But uh, I climbed way up in this tree. And it is sketchy, but I can see forever. Couldn't see any moose, but it's gonna be good. Um, just being able to call from up here, project the volume over the trees, it's gonna go forever, so.
house. And then uh, we're climbing up in the tree pretty much, and that's when we're spotting them. I spotted one this morning from the tree. Chris spotted some from the tree. And then Rich just spotted a bull. It's the best bull we've seen since we've been hunting. Probably only like 35 inches, maybe 40. Sitting by the fire, drying our boots out. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of funny how comforting a uh, fire could be. Today's been windy and cold, and I've had a chill because my feet got wet. And uh, something as simple as just a small fire just warm you up, warm your spirits. But it's been fun. First day, saw some moose, saw a bear. Called a bull in, called my first moose in, that was pretty cool. I mean, could have smoked him. 220. So, he was grunting back and raking, and it was really cool to see. But, uh, see what tomorrow brings. We're excited. Hope it's calm so we can start. We can take the raft out, get around the ponds, get around the lake, see what happens. So it's pretty much just been raining and windy since about uh, 3 or 4 in the morning. So today might be a wash. It might rain all day. Might not get any hunting in. Well, the rain and wind obviously doesn't stop the moose. We're out there looking at a cow, and all of a sudden we hear a bull grunt behind camp, because I was calling a little bit this morning, and we walk out there, 55 incher at 15 yards standing there, and I don't have my bow, and uh, Chris and Rich both pass it up. I'm a little worried that their expectations are a little bit too high. Um, I think they're both going to kick themselves in the butt for not taking that bowl. Um, me, that's the exact type of bowl I had on my expectations. That's what I wanted. Um, and then anything bigger is just a bonus. Um, 
So Chris runs back, 15 yards, turns, I mean, easiest shot ever. Could have killed him in my recurve. He runs out, and he stops. Chris makes it all the way back. I'm calling him, keeping him interested. And I draw back, don't really have a shot, but then I take my shot at 40 yards. And uh, my arrow's flying perfect, and I'm like, I just killed a stud with my bow. And it hit a branch and goes right under him. I am so bummed I didn't grab my bow in the beginning. I, I didn't realize that both of them didn't, are looking for a world record, I thought. I mean, that was a stud bull. Um, so, I don't know. I'll be sure to take my bow every time they're up. Because they're going to pass on some giants, apparently. Um, I'm super worried that they're going to end up either not shooting a moose or shooting a dink at the end. But, I'm going to live by the old saying, don't pass up on the first day what you'd shoot on the last. So, um, hopefully that bull comes back. I mean, he's grunting like crazy. He's so active. I mean, they're coming. They're so vocal. They're coming in the calls. I mean, the rut is in full swing. Which is awesome. That means there's going to be bulls moving. And, uh, yeah, it's only day two. And I've had opportunity. Um, I'm going to be kicking myself in the butt from the opportunity I get. I mean, to me, that bull's so nice. I'm tempted that if, if it walks on the other side of the lake, I'll shoot it with a freaking rifle. I mean, I spend a lot of money to come hunt this. I'd like to go home with a bull that I can mount. And look, I mean, that was a stud. 15 yards, and uh, about 50 yards away from camp, literally, maybe less, so, uh, we'll see, we'll see, but I'm excited because I'm going to get an opportunity quick, because these guys are going to pass up great bowls, so. Trying to listen for a moose, and all I hear is. Oh man. Huh? <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's only 8.30, but as you can probably hear, um, it was time to turn in. We're all kind of tired. Um,. It was slow the rest of the day. This morning was awesome. Um, sucks I've watched the video like 20 times when that bull comes out at 15 yards. I think he's a giant. Like That's exactly the type of bull I wanted to kill. So I hope we see him again tomorrow. I mean, I might even shoot him with a rifle if he doesn't come into bow range. So I would be so happy to go home with that bull, even if I hammered him with a gun. So. I'm, uh, I'm already missing Isaac, um, and Sam too, but it's just tough to be away, and, uh, it's only been like four days, so I still got <laughs> like ten days left, so, um, yeah, I better tough it out, but... I'm excited for tomorrow.
pretty awesome, dude. It's a nice day today, finally. Kind of. <laughs> Sun's out. Sun's actually kind of warm. Yep. It's a lot different style hunting than what we're used to. You don't run a gun like you do with deer and elk. No. A lot more sitting. A lot more sitting. Yep. Waiting, listening, glassing, calling. Some weird bird. <laughs> Above him. Or through him. He dropped, didn't he? He dropped. He dropped. He had to have dropped. Alaskan black bear down, baby. That was off of this rest. That was a joke. Yeah, he dropped. Luckily, he gave me a second shot. Unlucky for him. <sighs> All right, so it's day three. Um, Chris and I went down the, the lake a little bit on the boat to see if we could uh, call in a moose. Came back and Rich was nowhere to be found in camp. Hopefully he's back there when we get back. So I climb up in the looking tree and I glass this bear. And uh, so we paddled across the lake. We waited for Rich for a little bit, but he just didn't show up and I was like, Got a tag? We all actually bought tags. Um, it's just an over-the-counter tag, just like moose out here in Alaska. So we uh, paddled across the lake, and uh, I have my bow, and I was like, let's try to predator call him in and shoot him with my bow. And uh, he just stood there and watched us call, 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 call. So then I was like, you know what? I wanted to shoot something with this rifle. Um, Chris actually brought it to shoot his moose with. It's uh, my wife's grandpa's. Um, it's his rifle and he passed away about a year ago. So uh, it's just kind of like in honor of him we're taking it out here. So it's really cool. This is actually my first bear with a rifle. So it'd be, it's really cool that, that I did it with this gun. But uh, yeah, it was a lot further than I thought and I was leaning on some willows. It was pure luck. I mean, it was like a 300 yard shot. Pure luck. I missed the first shot and he stood there and I drilled him on the second one. So I think he's dead. So we're gonna take a look at him. So while the guys are uh, trying to call in a moose and I'm waiting on the plane to pick up my bear, figured I'd eat some bear. Got fresh bear back shot. Um, this is just what's left. We ate a ton of it, almost all of it last night. So it was really, really good. Frying it in butter. 
a little bit of Montreal steak seasoning, and money. So, um, Chris and Rich went down the lake to try some calling down there. And I just stayed in camp. I'm waiting for the plane to come pick up my bear from yesterday. Um, my hair is uh, pretty greasy and lovely. But uh, yeah, I just been climbing up in our tree and glassing around and doing some calling from camp. All the moose come right by our camp that come down this way. So, kind of discouraging. I mean, it's only day four, but um, really only one shooter. And now both of the guys are like, if I see that moose again, I'm going to shoot it. We might not see it again. That's why you can't pass up on the first day what you shoot on the last. It's so cliche, but so true. Because um, in about four days, they're going to be regretting the heck out of not shooting that bull. 15 yards. Uh, Alright, so I'm sitting in camp. It's raining all day. But I just heard a gunshot. And it was close, so it has to be them. So, I'm stoked. I'm right here on the radio. Um, I hope Chris killed the moose. Come on, baby. Don't, I mean, it's gonna be miserable cutting it up, but it's worth it. It's day six. I haven't seen crap. So, I killed the bear on day three. That had to have been them. If there's anybody else this close shooting, that'd be insane, since we are 60 miles from the near civilization. Or road or anything, but I'm waiting here I'm back on the radio. I'm stoked. Somehow I've kept this fire going in the rain. I'm freezing. I'm soaked. I haven't seen a moose, but I hope they just killed a good bull. Alright, I just got word. We got a bull down. Chris just hammered a bull. So they're coming back to get me, and we're going to head back, take some pics, and start cutting it up. Um, it's quite a ways from camp, so... It's going to be a really long night. Hopefully it quits raining. Alright. Chris is just finishing up. Cutting uh, his uh, 2017 Alaska bull moose. In Alaska, you're required to pretty much get every scrap of edible meat off the animal. Which we're finishing up doing. I think it's a good law. Every state should have it. Um, we could donate a lot of this meat. So, there's a lot of... Uh, people in poverty in Alaska in these villages like Bethel so getting the last of the scraps but, and then keeping them out but there he is it's awesome big old giant bull moose these animals bodies are unbelievable what are you doing Chris? taking the tender line out what are we having for dinner tonight? Dinner on. Yeah, yeah. Packing up. Um, yeah, we've seen like zero moose besides this cool bull that Chris shot. And yeah, that's the only bull we've seen in like six days, so it's been rough. But we're moving. Today, Rich and I went like five miles from camp. And that's a little too far to pack a moose, so. Um, yeah, they're gonna move us to another place, so we're looking forward to it. Moose here don't care. They just dropped us off at our new camp. We got camp all set up. I've hunted a lot of places, and uh, I don't know if I've ever been in a more beautiful place in my whole life. It's dead calm. The, the sunset, the, the camera doesn't do it justice. It is unbelievable.
is my wife and my son. Um, it's amazing out here. And thank you, Mama, for letting me come. This has been an incredible adventure. Alaska is truly, it's indescribable. Everybody has to make it up here at least once, Tom. Huh? Alaskan giant. Oh, baby. Oh, my God. He's so big. He's a big loss. He is so big. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, God. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, no, that just happened. I tried to get it done with the recurve. He, I think he got his butt kicked in a fight. Because he did not want to come in. He got to like 80 and then circled us huge. I thought I heard him over there. I, hit, I pounded his shoulder for a shot. He's moving. He just went down, but I, I saw him sticking up above the brush. I'm not worried. Two hit him solid. Let's go ahead, come on. Well, oh, that was crazy. This morning we woke up and we're sitting by the fire and and I'm like, that sounds like antlers. And uh, it was right where Chris and I were planning on going this morning. And so we crossed the lake. We headed towards where we heard the, the sounds of the bulls fighting. And uh, hiked in about a mile. Got to this clearing. I looked down, I see a moose. I put my binos up and I'm like, oh my gosh. This is just a giant. So we set up with the recurve, I start calling, coming in on a string. But he was kind of playing the wind, he was a little leery. The wind was good. But uh, I was like, ah, oh, if he's not totally committed, that means he probably just lost that fight. Well, we're set up where I think he's gonna come up perfectly. Been like a 15 yard recurve shot. All of a sudden I look up like 120 yards and I see his head over the horizon, trying to circle around and wind us. I just threw the recurve down, grabbed the rifle, ran up to this tree. God just planted that tree 40 years ago for me to grow that branch exactly in my height where I needed to rest. Had a perfect rest. Made like a 120 yard shot. Pounded him in the shoulder. Hit him again behind the shoulder. And that's all she wrote. And it is an absolute giant. Just grabbed all of our gear. We're gonna go take a look at him.
I heard it. I sounded like antlers. And uh, I figured it was two bulls fighting. So we hiked up from camp about a mile. We just moved into this new spot yesterday. And uh, um, we hiked in to look over this top. Sure enough, we see this bull cruising. So I set up with my recurve and he was coming in good. But he wasn't sure. And uh, he skirted us like 150 yards to get our wind. And so I just, I'm not going to pass a bull like this with three days left. And uh, so I pounded him with uh, Sam's grandpa, who passed away his gun. Um, and he's broke up everywhere from that fight, so we think there's a bigger bull. But I am, this is exactly, I mean, this is like a dream come true bull. So. Broke there, broke there, broke there. The whole top is broke off. He's chipped everywhere. Gouged. He was just going at it. We could hear from camp. Battle Royale. Wow, chaos, baby. Oh my gosh, three days left. That's awesome. Thank you, God. Well, just having a little snack. Um, we got half the bowl cut up. We got two quarters packed out. It is brutal. If you think an elk is big, an Alaskan moose is like unreal. <sighs> I'm still like, I don't know, it's still kind of surreal. Like every time I look at his paddles, I'm just like, I shot that thing. I gotta take that thing home. It's just, it's cool when you when you come home with something twice as big as what you suspected and would have been happy with. That's the thing. Um, you know, I didn't want to shoot one with a gun unless it was a monster. And that's a monster. <laughs> so, I'm just, I'm blown away. I'm still so blessed and uh, it's Rich's birthday tomorrow. So we're gonna try to get him a birthday bowl and hopefully the bowl that kicked this bull's butt. So. I'm going to finish gaping them out and wait for the guys to get here and get this thing packed out today. That's when the work really starts. This is our second trip, Chris and I. We just got a quarter. So tomorrow we only have two rounds left. Uh, some scrap meat and the gaping horns. So we're about halfway.
again. Missed. Hit him again. Hit him again if you got it. And then grab my gun. And I just hear boom, boom, boom. Rich was up. Chris and I both shot our bulls. It's his birthday today. And he just hammered a stud bull. I cannot wait. I'm headed over there right now to check him out. Back to Rich's Moose, Chris and Rich already packed out a quarter each. Well, I sat at camp and enjoyed lunch, and I was waiting for the plane to come pick up my moose, and they didn't. But we got one more trip tonight, and then we'll come back for one more trip tomorrow, and we're done. We're tagged and bagged. So tomorrow, after we take the one trip, We'll just uh, rest, and then next day they pick us up, so it's been an awesome trip. We're officially tagged out. Today's Rich's birthday. Killed a great bull. We got it all cut up and ready to pack out tomorrow. And this is the last load of my bull. And, uh... This weight has never felt so good to carry. But what an incredible trip of a lifetime. Can't even explain it. This DIY Alaska moose hunt is just, you have to do it. You have to put it on your list and you have to come out and you gotta do it once in your life. Because it was an adventure unlike anything else. I was lucky enough to tag out on a bear and a moose. So, I mean, I'm just, Trip couldn't have been any better. So, that's why I keep your seat belt on at all times during the flight. Four exits, two on each side, two up front, two in the back. So, twist the handle, push out, survival gear in the back, emergency locating transmitter in the back, fire extinguisher in front of the pilot seat to operate a full pin squeeze, and it forbids the flame. Emergency play the life vest in the back, tear it open, put it over your head, pull the rest out. Wait. Any questions?
on the final leg. Seattle to Boise, almost home. Um, last couple days I've been just cutting up the meat, getting the antlers all uh, packaged up, ready to ship. So now I'm just heading, heading home, finally. Sleep in my own bed, take a shower, my own shower. It's gonna be amazing. All right, we are finally back in Boise, but we got a load. <laughs> All our meat made it, our antlers made it. So this is how you have to wrap them. Just a bunch of foam, and uh, it looks hilarious, but it worked. Everything's in one piece. Got our meat, got our antlers, ready to do it again.